In this uh, lecture, I am going to introduce uh, to you about the exciting world of data visualization and I am going to do that uh, through uh, some very famous uh, uh, and seminal examples from the field of data visualization. Uh, any book uh, or an article about data visualization will uh, not fail to mention these examples. So, some of you might have already come across uh, some of these examples. Uh, but uh, what these stories uh, tell us are, uh, these were people who were very interested in using data to communicate, to discover something and to persuade people. Uh, so, these people found an interesting way using data visualization to achieve their purposes. Uh, these stories are meant to get excited, get you excited uh, about the course and about the possibilities of what data visualization can do. Uh, also through these examples, I hope to convey that uh, uh, the range of possibilities with the with data visualization is really extensive. Uh, so there is, uh, there is so much uh, you know that you can do with data visualization. So some of the examples uh, that I am going to show uh, in this lecture, uh, besides being graphical in nature, they might also be um, interactive, uh, increasingly we are seeing uh, visualizations are not just static anymore, but they are interactive, uh, they are dynamic, uh, they, they, they can be also physical and tangible where you know you can actually touch and feel uh, and experience it besides your visual senses. Uh, they can also be you know very interesting visuals, uh, for example, like a photograph which you would never really think of it as a visualization, but can be an interesting um, outcome of a visualization. Uh, they can also be um, in the form of, uh, you know, a street furniture or a, or a, or a everyday utensil uh, or, or an object that we, uh, we all are familiar with, okay. So, uh, visualization is not just, you know, two-dimensional. Uh, and visual, but they can also have these other possibilities. The lecture is, uh, you know, segmented into multiple parts. So, make sure that you go through all of them uh, and along with the video content, uh, we also have uh, some additional learning material associated with the topic and, and uh, I would, uh, you know, request you to go through uh, them as well. Uh, so, the practice questions and the activity questions, uh, will be from both of them and that will kind of, you know, give you a good roundup of, you know, what you should know by the end of this week. Okay, so um, to start with, uh, you know, we, let us just, you know, um, um, understand from you guys, uh, what is it that, you know, you have, uh, uh, what is your idea about what data visualization is and what do you think uh, you will learn or what do you hope to learn from a course such as this. So, you said a few things here to interpret, is it? Okay. So, the first thing is very interesting, okay. So, there is an economy that is involved in, right? So, what you, you might have to uh, use mul many sentences, words, paragraphs, and how can you economically convey something? Okay, if you take about any information design, it is all about how do we economize and optimize the bandwidth so that, you know, people get what you are trying to say. So, if a uh, signage is very lengthy and requires, it is puzzling and then requires a lot of figuring out, then, you know, it is not economical, right? So, therefore, it fails, okay? So, one of the criteria by which uh, data visualization is judged is how economical it is, right? How, how with very few things it tells you more, okay? Doing less with more, right? So, economy is one of the important factors. So, it allows you or helps you to interpret information. So, information does not make sense. So, in other words, no. Uh, I would put uh, meaning here, okay. So, there is economy, there is meaning and 
there is story. You know, does everything have to have a story? It it won't have a story all the time, right? So if it is, you know, if it is some kind of a direction, you know, sign, uh, the, we have a map in front uh, of the main gate, right? Inside, just inside the main gate, which tells you how the campus is laid out. There is no story there, right? It's just information that is presented in a manner. Hopefully, it is presented economically, okay? So that you know you don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out where you are and how to get to where you want to go. Okay, so does it have any meaning? It probably does not have any meaning. It might have some meaning. Some of the maps might have some meaning. It might be loaded with meaning, in fact, right? If you want to uh, serve a particular purpose. Okay, many of the examples that you see here in uh, Dubois uh, visualizing black America is all graphical, geographical maps with very loaded meaning, right? And you can imagine what that meaning would have been. What is that meaning that he was, do you think he was, you know, I mean, probably you don't know anything about this book, but you can kind of tell, right, what this book is about. What is it about? <coughs> yes, Jishita. Okay, so it tells the lives of black Americans, you know, especially at the turn of the century, and therefore, there is a particular story or a narrative that the author is trying to build, right? So meaning becomes very important, okay? There is, there could be economy, but probably meaning trumps everything here, right? It has to convey a meaning, right? Uh, no, it could have multiple meanings. For example, it could talk about the uh, injustice and the disparity of black Americans versus white Americans, right? Uh, but it is not what the author surprisingly is doing here. Okay, what he does is actually, in fact, talks about the or celebrates the achievement of black American uh, since the emancipation. So this was done uh, about 30 years after slavery was abolished completely in the US, okay, it's outlawed or made illegal. And uh, what the author tried to do here is in the 30 years, how much the black Americans have progressed. So it's not a um, story of gripe and uh, crib and, uh, you know, oh, see, you know, how poor we are and, you know, how, uh, how much injustice, you know, has been done to us, et cetera, et cetera. But he's, he's celebrating the achievements, right? He's saying that, uh, you know, black Americans have done really well despite the difficulties that they have had. In just th three decades, their literacy levels have gone up, you know, they are, they are married. They are uh, they're married and they are staying in stable marriages. Uh, they are starting businesses. They are inventing stuff. You know, they're going to college. They are paying taxes. Their households have equipment. So basically, a lot of data that he collected and is presenting the, uh, the 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 progress the black community has made. Okay, so so there is meaning. So all the visualizations that he did in support of that is to further that meaning, that further that narrative, right? So there is a very heavy meaning and story in that, uh, in, the, in the ones that, you know, Dubois did. But not necessary that it might have all of them. Okay, anything else besides this? What does data visualization do? You're already going a little bit further ahead of what the data visualization could potentially do, okay? So what are the, some of the very basic things data visualization does? So, um, so I would put, uh, you know, explain something. Well, I mean, you can explain something in text, but what if that explanation is not satisfactory, right? Or people find that explanation very hard to understand even then, right? So you might have to find other means of explaining it. One of the ways to explain things is you can explain it visually. It, you know, in addition to explaining it verbally and through text, uh, textually, and therefore it might become uh, easier to understand, right? Right? Okay. So explaining explaining will also require you know why why something works, why something doesn't work, why how what of something, right? So all of them comes, and then we use a lot of visual elements, you know, like what Tejaswini said, you know could be about uh, you know remembering better understanding better so 
it simply you know explain help with understanding things that are difficult to understand generally okay uh, it might not tell a story right for example you might uh, explain how this uh, mechanical pen pencil works okay so there is no story to it it's just that you know if i just write a two paragraph uh, 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 explanation about it you know it still might not but if i do some kind of a illustration of this pen break it up you know into exploded views and then explain how these parts go into each other and then maybe even use animation or something like that to see how the work how it works then you know it is easy, easy, easy for me to understand right so you know it's merely explaining something right explaining a phenomena here in this case uh, so it might not have a story right so a lot of people you know uh, automatically assume that data visualization have to tell a story right uh, or they think that you know they they want to learn data visualization because they want to tell very powerful stories or compelling stories and all that. so not all data visualization will lead to storytelling but some of them might require so it depends on the context and what the purpose is right so if it is that you know you want to convince somebody uh, you want to change people's mind uh, you want to advocate for some change then you know you build in a story and uh, that story could be powerful when it is told visually and in support of the data right so you're not just making up a story because you like the story but there is compelling reasons why the story should be listened to because it is backed by data right so it has this additional layer of legitimacy right so okay So is there is something inherently good about data that they should understand, they should be accessed? So that's okay. So if you organize it well, then you know, people will be able to access it better, understand it, right? So that is, uh, you know, the assumption is that you know, there is something good, the people, people should have access to data, and, and that is something that is desirable, right? Now, is that the case? Why should data sh should be accessible? I'm asking a very a question before that, right? You are assuming that you know data accessing data should be something that should be done, and therefore data visualization can be used to do that, right? Okay, so uh, so generally, you know, information like what uh, uh, Bishal said uh, is true, right? Generally, having more information is better than having less information, right? Do you agree the, to that? So we talk about better informed population, right? You must have come across this phrase, right? You now, what is the meaning of better informed? or better informed voters, voters who understand the issues at stake, <coughs> what the parties are about, <coughs> what is the party's uh, philosophy about certain issues, who the candidates are, how good the candidates are, what is the track record of those candidates, will the candidate be good for my constituency or not, will he support my causes or not, right? So having that information hopefully will lead to a better choice that the voter might make, right? So in general, a society which is better informed is a good society, right? So I mean, the underlying assumption is that uh, rational human beings will uh, make rational choices about the information that they have and make it for the good of their own selves or their families or their communities, right? So this is, you know, I mean, if somebody uses that information to make a bad decision, that's something that we can't do anything about, right? But generally speaking, more information is better, right? And so information is in available in the form of data, you know, in multiple places and all that. And increasingly, this data, uh, much of this data which was not available before is becoming available now, right? So there is an increasing level of transparency about what is happening, right? So when I was a student 25 years ago, this whole process of engineering admission or any professional college admission was a complete black box to all of us, right? We would write a paper application, post it, and then hope that you get an admission in some college somewhere, right? 
nobody can tell you who's doing this, what is the policy behind it, what are the rules being applied and all. Just compare that, right? Within the 25 years time, now everything is transparent, right? The more transparency means that there is a less scope for people to, uh, you know, do something uh, bad, right? With that, you know, uh, or system becoming corrupt or whatever it is, right? So some of these very high stake games, uh, sorry, high stake admissions are extremely transparent as well, right? So that is why people go to court, they say this is not done right, this is not right, and the courts will inter intervene, find out what is the problem when all this is. So there is, so that is more information. That's what more information has done to us, right? So since information moved from the analog medium to the digital medium and it is becoming slowly liberated from wherever they were hidden, okay, we are becoming better informed about many things and overall that has led to um, better outcomes in general, right? So, so how do you make this data accessible? One of the ways, uh, like uh, Indubushan said, is to, you know, sometimes this data is so hard to understand, right? And even now, a lot of government agencies go out of their way to make this become harder to access. And uh, so, um, yes, you know, one of the ways by which there's so much of data that is a propulsion, you know, that there is a, uh, the, the, the profusion of data that is available to us these days is that you know, how can we make this data uh, accessible to people so that they are more empowered, right? So, so you have more power now, right? More, more information, more power to you. You can question people, right? So now everything, you know, for example, the, the expenses, the budgets uh, of municipalities, corporations, the panchayats, everywhere, you know, you know pe people can be held accountable Okay, there is a lot more transparency, people are becoming more empowered, right? So they know their rights. So I think you mentioned uh, information is right, right? So, which is also why government has uh, institutionalized <coughs> this and then made it that, you know, as a citizen, you have a, in, a right to information, right? You can, you can raise queries uh, of government agencies, which are supported by taxpayers' money. And you can ask questions, and then you can ask them for specific data. So if they if they if they can't give you the data, they have to give an explanation as to why they can't give you the data. Okay. For example, students can write to us and ask for uh, how they were evaluated in a particular examination, right? In the admission test, for example, right? We have to give them breakdown of everything. What they cannot ask you is ask us is that you know give us. Uh, the data, the information about how this particular student got you know, admitted. Give that, give that X person or the Y person's uh, uh, marks and breakdown, answer scripts, everything, right? We can't do that, right? Because it infringes on somebody else's uh, privacy to that information, right? So therefore, uh, only if that person asks, we can give it. You know, one person cannot ask somebody else's. So there are some limitations to that, but basically that's the whole idea, right? Okay, so we will continue with this discussion. So we'll just, uh, you know, take a break. So what I want to do during that break is that, you know, I'll start off with uh, the exercise that I have in mind, um, you know, for this uh, today's class. So the beta students will have to come back and do it in the afternoon. Okay, the railway timetable exercise that I've given you, right? So, but uh, this one hour that we will use to do it uh, with, the, with the MDA students, and then when you guys can come back and join, I'll start the lecture with the slides and all that. Then we'll continue here and continue with the first lecture. Okay? All right. You know, essentially what you guys think about, uh, you know, what this course is about and what you hope to learn from it, we saw that, you know, uh, data visualization is about economy, it's about meaning, uh, you know, it could sometimes tell a story, but mostly it is to help people understand, to explain something. Uh, and uh, it could also be something that uh, uh, can be used to make data accessible. We talked about how information is power, and the more uh, information you have, the better decisions you can make. So how can we make citizens access more information in a manner that could be helpful to them, right? So that could be also purposes of what data visualization can do.